Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and this fall along, we are going to work with blob storage object metadata, and specifically with PowerShell in order to set it and view that it's working. So what we're going to need is um, a, an environment in order to run PowerShell. So we're gonna do it in Cloud Shell. We'll expand that, and you'll have to be on PowerShell mode. If you this is the first time you're running Cloud Shell ever, you might have to accept for a storage account. So it might say like, create a storage account for this. And you just say yes. Uh, notice here that it's running uh, install module for you for Azure. Um, so, you know, if you're doing this on your local machine, and you can do this if you have Windows installed. So the idea is that you would open up PowerShell. So I type in PowerShell. I right click it and run it in administrator mode. If you're on a Mac, you can install PowerShell uh, on a Mac. But to be honest, this is so much easier if we just use Cloud Shell. But I just want to show you a couple things. So if you were to install um, uh, Azure, you do install module hyphen name AZ. And then this thing takes forever. Like I swear to you, it takes forever. And that's why I don't really want to do it this way. Let me just bump up the font here to 24. And so we just say yes to all. And we'll let that install in the background. But I just want you to know that that's how you install uh, all the Azure, Azure um, command commandlets, because uh, it's very useful to know. And we do it a couple times. I actually do do it in one, and we have to wait, and it takes forever. But while that's installing the background, we're going to assume that we did connect AZ and install module, and now we are just uh, getting some stuff. So it's a good habit to, whenever you're using, just type it clear here, whenever you're using po PowerShell with Azure to make sure that you are on the correct subscription, um, because it can be in the wrong place. So even though I know this is the one we're on, I'm just going to set it again so we get the habit of doing it. So it's set AZ context here, and then we'll do subscription, and we'll do Azure subscription one. And so that will make sure that that is explicitly set. Now we want to uh, get access to the resource group, and of course we could easily do this um, through um, uh, the console, but you know, I want us to learn some PowerShell. So I'm gonna make a new tab here, and what we'll do is make our way over to storage accounts because we're gonna need a new storage account for this. We'll go ahead and hit create, and we will make a new resource group. This one's gonna be called uh, My Blob Metadata. And we'll say Blob Metadata 88, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not used, we'll hit Review Create and we will create it here. And we'll give it a moment here so we can go to the resource group. So there are a few things we will have to type in. That thing will be done in a moment. So we'll need, um, just type clear here, it always messes up. I'm gonna expand this because we really don't need anything in the background. So we want dollar sign resource group equals, and then whatever we called it. So my metadata blob, I think, or my blob metadata, my blob metadata. And we'll hit enter. Whoops, that is not what I want. I want an A on the end there. And then we need the storage account name. So here it will be called, go to the resource. That is the name right there. All we're doing is setting variables here right now. And it's not copying properly because you have to right click. You can't use hotkeys there. Why? I don't know. Uh, we'll do storage key equals, and the idea is we are going to fetch our storage key. So we'll do az storage account key resource group name, dollar sign resource group, and then name, dollar sign storage account. I just noticed that uh, I spelled that wrong. I'm just going to hit enter because I know that's not going to work. I just want to take this C and make it smaller. Go back here and do storage account hit enter, and so that will create that. Then we need our context, and we'll say new az storage context storage account name, dollar sign storage account, storage account key, dollar sign storage key. And it doesn't like something because we need to actually get the value, because if we type in storage here, and by the way, I didn't type this right again, storage key, but if we do storage key and just see what was returned, notice that there's two keys, so we'd have to do something like zero dot value here. So we'll go here and say square zero dot 
value. And it says cannot provide parameter for name. Um, oh, you know what? That doesn't make sense. It's not, it's not name. Sorry, it's because I'm going back to the uh, wrong one here. So this is this one. And we really wanted the context. So have to be careful what we're doing here. There we go. And so now we have a context. So it's just telling us what we're kind of bound to. And so now we can do get az storage container hyphen context dollar sign context. If you're wondering like, where do you get all these? Like all of these um, commands? Like once you find one, you find them all pretty much. So here there's like tons, tons of them. You can read through them and they have tons of examples. So you can work your way through and figure it out. Uh, so I was expecting, I guess there are no containers. So that kind of makes sense. So we'll go over to here and we'll say container one, keep it all lowercase to make our lives easier. And we'll go back over here and we will hit up again. Do you, you can see there's a container. I think we can type in container and then do container one to specify even greater context there. Except I just have to put a capital C on here maybe. Oh, lowercase on this one. I think all these parameters don't matter. They can all be lowercase. So those don't matter. Uh, so we now have a reference to our container. So now what we need to do is um, reference a blob. So what I'm gonna do is type in blob. And I think we'll have to upload something first, but I'm just gonna type something for fun here. Uh, and so I'd probably do like an image. I have an image on our desktop that I've been using for a while. So data pipe uh, web P is probably what it is. And we'll do container. It isn't there yet, but we'll see what happens if we do it and there's no image or uh, thing uploaded. We'll do dollar sign context. And so it says, could not recognize that command. This happens a lot. It always has to be like something like a verb or an action and then whatever. So it's just saying the file's not there. We know that's the case. We'll go into our container and we'll say upload. We will then go and upload data pipe. It's actually a PNG, which is a lot easier on us. We'll go back over here. Again, you'll have to upload your own file. It'll have its own name. So you gotta go find an image yourself. We'll hit enter. And so if we now type in blob, we have a reference to that blob. So let's get some information about the blob. So we'll say blob dot blob client get properties dot value. And so we have a lot of information about the blob. Notice that there is no metadata right here. Um, I think we can just get the metadata if we type in metadata. I don't think there is any metadata, so it's not returning anything. I'm just gonna make sure I'm typing it right. I'll type something I know is there, like e tag. Yeah, so it's just there's nothing set. So what we'll do is make some metadata. So we'll do metadata equals new object system dot collections dot generic dot dictionary double quotation squares string string so we are creating a new object that expects a dictionary with a string string hopefully that makes sense it's because we have to add a uh, key and a value right because that's how uh, tags mostly work even for metadata so we'll go here and say author exam pro and we'll say dollar sign metadata dot add department IT. And we'll just say blob dot blob client dot set metadata. And then we'll actually set the metadata. So we'll say metadata dollar sign null. I don't know why the second one is null. I don't really care. If we wanted to look it up, we could. It doesn't really matter but it does set the metadata because if we go back to our blob, do this, now we have metadata on it. Just to make sure that it is working correctly, we're gonna do is just null it out. So if we go blob, so and now we'll fetch it again, just so that we know remotely, it's not like a local thing. We'll go here, and so there you go. So that's all I really wanted to show you, and hopefully you get a little bit more PowerShell experience there. What we'll do is go to the resource group and clean up here uh, we will go into this one. We will delete it.
give it a moment, and there you go.